Welcome back to the 127 Fit Podcast. Today's guest is an entrepreneur, strength coach, photographer, and director of a CBD technology startup company. Today's guest is Adam Bertine. Adam, I want to welcome you to the 127 Fit Podcast. Thanks for having me. For sure, man. So Adam, we're going to just uh, jump right into things. I have um, four questions I kind of like to start things off with with each of my uh, guests on the podcast. The first question that I have for you is how do you start your day? Do you have a specific morning routine or morning ritual that you like to stick to on most mornings? Well, yeah, I think my routine is pretty much the same. I, I pretty much sleep in until as late as I can. Okay, and perfect, I, perfect. Uh, I literally have it kind of timed out. I get up, I uh, take a shower, I go out, I get a cup of coffee made, and I know it takes me about 20 minutes to uh-huh. get to the gym. And I'm, uh, I'm basically on my way to the gym. I'm usually listening to some podcast. Okay, usually it's a okay. sermon on my, on my way right. into the gym. Um, just to kind of get my day going because I know it's it goes really fast for and it sure, starts for really sure. fast. So yeah. um, that's usually how almost every day starts. Cool. Now, um, in, in regards to kind of like the the the, um, the nuts and bolts of that morning routine, is there like any any type of like gratitude or maybe prayer or kind of anything like just kind of getting your mindset for the day with within that routine? Yeah, if I, if I don't have a really early morning client, um, I really like to just kind of sit down and, and journal. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have a, a prayer journal that I pretty much I either do before uh, I get to work or I'll sometimes have 30 minutes between my first client and my second client. And I really try to do that. Uh, and I try, started writing down my prayers right. and yep. Just, yep. just things that I'm thankful for because, I, you know, life gets really busy and it gets really hard. And then... It, it's great to be able to look back because we have short memories, Absolutely. right? And, yeah, for sure. Uh, it's really helped me probably over the last seven or eight years to to do that. And uh, and I go back and I'm like, oh man, I'm I'm dealing with the same thing, or right, oh, right. I I got through this Absolutely. battle that I was fighting. So uh, that's what I that's typically what I try to do and how I try to start my day. Awesome, awesome, love it. All right, so the second question, Adam, that I have for you is um, is there a favorite book that you have? or a book that you like to gift often? Um, gosh, I, I'll tell you, I, I read a lot. Uh-huh. Um, I, I can't say that I finish every book that I read, mm-hmm. but um, I, I have a very eclectic uh, mix of books. Um, one of my favorite ones that I've really just recently read was this Go-Giver series. Okay. Um, there's um, the Go-Giver, there's the Go-Giver Leader, um, and uh, those books are really about kind of a, a metaphor for um, just, you know, you, the more you give um, and the more that you are, the less worried you are about, you know, what you're trying to get or the, what you're receiving, uh, all those things come back to you, mm-hmm. right? And uh, the other one that I really liked uh, was a behavioral psychology book by, uh, I think it was Mark Mason named okay. The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F. Yep, right? yep, I've heard of it. Yep, and, for sure. Uh, and that was one of the best books I've I've read, um, just on on human behavior, and and I'm just I'm just really intrigued by mm. how we operate, why we do certain things, right, the decisions right. we make or don't make, mm-hmm. and uh, and really kind of just you know putting things in perspective about what's important and what's not important, right, right? right? And the the whole premise of this book sounds like you don't care about anything, but mm-hmm. it's actually caring about only the things that are important mm-hmm. to you. Okay, so cool. uh, I, I really love that, yeah, that yeah. aspect of the book. Right. Awesome. Awesome. Those, those, the, the Go Giver series, that sounds like a, th- those will be a, a, an awesome read. I, I'm just thinking because I know you're a man of faith and I am as well. I know, um, you know, the scripture that says you, you kind of you, you sow what you reap, you know what I mean? Or you reap what you sow. Excuse me. So that's that's uh, that's definitely some powerful stuff. So um, is there um, a favorite quote or mantra, Adam? And it, th- there could be more than one because I know for, for myself, like I'm I'm a big quote guy. But for me, I find that, you know, different seasons of life, there's different words or different mantras or quotes that come up. But maybe is there one just right off the top of your head that has been uh, very impactful in your life at some point? Uh, well, I, I think there's there's really two. There's one that I heard my uh, football college football coach use all the time, and it was uh, I don't know if he came up with it or if it was a repeat, but he always used to say, "You are who you are when no one else is around." Mm, yeah, for um, sure. And it's really just kind of a way to you know, you know, 
are you just doing what you need to when the coach is watching or when your mentor is watching? And uh, that was that's something that's always really stuck with me. And then uh, the one recently, I don't I don't know if I heard this somewhere or I just started saying it, but uh, I use this quite often, and, and it's uh, you won't always be motivated, so you have to be disciplined. Mm, so okay. because so many things that we do, um, we end up just. You know, I think, uh, you know, we, it, it's easy to say no, or we don't feel like it. And we're not always feeling like training. We don't always feel like we're eating to eat right. We right. don't always feel, man, I don't want to, I don't want to do the right thing this time. Mm-hmm. Right. So, but I think it's a, you know, you have to develop these habits that are disciplined. Right. Right. Um, so that, you know, when you don't feel like it, you know, you go ahead and do it. Right. For sometimes, sure. sometimes I think you just have to go ahead and move and act until you start to believe it. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Cool. Awesome. I appreciate you sharing those two quotes, uh, Adam. So the last question that I have for you in regards to the warm up, um, is there, and if there's more than one, again, please feel free to share, but do you have a favorite or most listened to podcast? Uh, yeah, I, like I said before, I'm pretty much listening to, uh, t- sermons or okay, something yeah. on my way to, on my way to work. So I listen to Stephen Furtick from Elevation Church. I listen to Judah Smith, from uh, Church Home, I listened to Darius Daniels, uh, you know, and I recently just started listening to a really good friend of mine who actually is a photographer and videographer, uh-huh. and uh, his name is Lamar Griffin, and it's called Less Talk, More Do, and uh, again, it just, it's, uh, th- those things kind of just help frame my day and, and give me uh, insights into just you know, where I'm at in life, right, you know, right, and, yeah. and give me new ways to think about maybe problems or, mm-hmm. or things that I'm going through, or I know somebody's going through. And, uh, I don't, I, I think that we were given brains to, to basically just assimilate and collect information mm-hmm. that then a lot of times we can, you know, we don't know when that moment's going to be, but the more that we can, uh, fill our brains with, good positive things right, you know right. we, we have that to spit out right we mm-hmm. we speak to ourselves internally all day long and you know a lot of it's negative right right um or can be so uh, i think the more that we can put those positive things in our in our heads the the better that we are uh dealing with adversity that's absolutely that's absolutely going to come along mm-hmm, mm-hmm. now before we before we kind of go any further i i do want to talk about um and touch on just you know, your faith, because that's, um, you know, we, we actually had a phone conversation and in kind of preparation uh, for this. And, and that was kind of, I believe, if I remember correctly, was brought up. Um, it's something that, that you have um, posted on your Instagram, kind of in your, your bio. So just as much as you, you, you want to share uh, about your faith, but just what is the value and the importance for you, um, Adam, in regards to faith and just your, your belief in God? Uh, well, I, I think that you know, the, the first thing I'd like to say is, you know, um, you know, I'm, I'm far from perfect. Right, you know? right. Um, I think that as soon as people hear, you know, somebody say, oh, I'm a man of faith or I'm a Christian or whatever, there's this connotation that, oh, like, you know, they must have, they think they have it all For together. Sure. Or, I got you. Or yep. they're, they're hypocritical because, you know, they're, they, they believe this, but then they go and do right, that, right? Right, right. You know, so, you know, I, I'm only human. You For know, sure. I, I, I make mistakes and. You know, I think, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, having something that is, I think, you know, I, I believe in God and I believe that, um, you know, in, in his son, Jesus and, and, you know, life is hard. Yeah. Right. And, Mm -hmm. you know, the, there's the mindset out there that, you know, if you just work hard enough, you're going to be able to overcome anything. Mm. Well, I think that's. Uh, not necessarily true. Right, right. Uh, if you just think positively enough, this is going to happen, right? I don't think that's necessarily mm. true, right? And and when we when we put the onus on ourselves and in our own strength to say, oh, I can get through this, you know, there's going to be that time, and there was that time, and we we may get to that, you know, for me, when you know there wasn't anything I couldn't do through my own strength, right? I mean, I gave. I prayed all the time since I was a, a kid and, you know, I, you know, would say, you know, thank God for this or thank God for right, that, right. you know, but, but there does come a time when, um, you can't get through it. 
right? Or it seems like it, and mm-hmm. uh, or you're not getting the result that you want. So right. to be able to have a you know higher power, and and I believe that's God and Jesus Christ uh, mm-hmm. to um, lean on, you know, and and. You know, it's it's kind of cliche to say, walk through the valley of the shadow of right, death. Right, right, right. Right. I mean, it's it, you know, those things are real, mm-hmm. and um, mm-hmm. and so my faith, I think, um, helps me get through some of those some of those difficult times. And and actually, just this this morning, our uh, our pastor at, at Red Rocks Church, Eric Parks, said that you know sometimes you know you're in this community of people of faith because. Your faith is when you need your faith the most. You have the least amount of faith. Right, right. You know, so it's like when you have these other people that are are an example of faith uh, and can encourage you. You know, those those things go a long way. Absolutely. And, and and I've had people come up to me and be like, "Dude, I don't know how you are going through all of this that you went through, and you're so positive." Mm-hmm. Or, you know, you didn't get crushed by it. And I'm like. Well, that's not really how I was feeling at right, the time. Right. In fact, I felt like I couldn't go on. I felt mm-hmm. like I couldn't get up the next day. I right. felt like there's no way I'm going to make it through another week, mm-hmm. right? I, you know, it's it's uh, it's difficult, um, but but that faith component is 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 really what um, I believe gets me gets me through those Absolutely. those times. Cool. Yeah, and I I was actually at. Uh, uh, Red, a Red Rock service uh, last night. They were talking about um, uh, they were in the Book of Ruth and stuff, you know. So and and it's just it's just and they were talking about kind of like the you know how you know life isn't just like a straight path. It's, there's just like those windy, curvy roads and stuff. So it's just you know that that faith is is um, you know faith in God, that faith in Jesus. It's just it's 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 that foundation. You know what I mean? That's yeah. that's so necessary. Um, in in life, so well, cool. Can, can I say one more? Yeah, absolutely. And, please, you know, please. And, and, and you, you know, uh, you, it just makes me think about you know everybody kind of thinks that you know and and I think they're erroneously kind of misled that that if you become a believer or if you start to have this faith, all of a sudden things are taken mm, care of, right? right? And then, right. It, then it gets easier, right? Right. I think it's actually the opposite. Like mm-hmm. I think it actually gets harder, right? Like right. I think that. You know, going through life, even when I was, uh, I was, I would say, still a man of faith, but maybe not walking the line I should yep, be. Yeah. Like, it seemed like I had a lot less problems, mm. right? Because I, I really feel like, like, the enemy really just says, okay, cool. Like, he he's not living the life like in the way that he should. So mm-hmm. I'm just gonna let him let right. him be that way, right? I agree. You know, with but that, yeah. but then as soon as I start to try to do things, you know more on the up and up and, mm-hmm. and living this life. It's like, crap, like I want to, maybe I should just go back to, you know, this life of ease. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. but, uh, but at the end of the day, I, I don't think that, um, eternally that's what, uh, I'm called to do. Right. right. Uh, I don't think that's the example that, you know, I'm supposed to, supposed to lead and, and I'm not going to be perfect. Right. And, you right. know, I'm still going to, you know, make mistakes, but yeah. But I think the more that we try and we struggle and and fight through those battles, that um, you know, it does give other people encouragement. For sure. So, for sure. Uh, so that's that's really important. Cool, cool. I I, I appreciate you uh, touching on that, Adam, and and being willing to to be open and share share with the listeners and myself a little bit about your your personal faith. So um so with that being said, Adam, I I just want to uh, jump into a little bit of in regards to your backstory, kind of your background. Um, if you don't mind sharing with myself and the listeners uh, where where you grew up, kind of like what the earlier years looked like. I'm I'm assuming probably sports and athletics and things of that nature were were a big part of that um, the, the, that early upbringing for you. So just touch on a little bit, kind of where you grew up, um, extracurricular activities, sports, all that. Kind of work our way up to high school, and then we'll we'll kind of move on from there. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Well, I'm a, I'm a Nebraska Cornhusker. Okay, so, cool, uh, cool. I grew up in a small town named Brady, Nebraska. And, okay. Uh, it was about 380 people, and uh, it was a school of K through 12. Okay. Uh, all in one building, and uh, interesting fact, my brother or my dad and I, we had the same fourth grade teacher. Oh wow, uh, cool, Miss cool. Bruce Bliss. Uh huh. And uh, and then. My brother, my dad, my sister, and I were all valedictorian of the same high Sweet. school. Sweet, there you so, go. So, um, 
you know, it was uh, it was a small town. Everybody knew everybody. I grew up on a farm and ranch. Okay. Uh, we had uh, three thousand acres of pasture, and and we had cattle, horses, and yep. and uh, you know, I I I really grew up driving tractors, right, and four wheelers, and and being a boy, going hunting, you know, playing outside, you know, uh, you know, things that uh, I I really uh, think have have kind of been getting lost you know i think there's a there's something about you know living here in denver um and outside of a rural community that uh that really i miss like it's a hard life right but, right um there's a lot of uh there's a lot of thankfulness a lot of respect a lot of just um hard work mm-hmm. that, that goes into into how i grew up and uh yeah i, I grew up you know at, at the school that i went to it was 380 people uh, or the the town was, um, and so I got a, in, introduced to a lot of different things. So Absolutely. I played I played football, I played basketball, I ran track, I maybe played baseball for a few years in the summer. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I was in band, I was in the marching band. Yeah. Yep. Um, so I was in on a quiz bowl team. I was in speech. So you know, things that a lot of kids out here and 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 just the size of schools now they just don't really have the opportunities right, right. to get thrown into all Absolutely. those those things right um and so i had i had a wide range of experiences mm-hmm. growing up and uh yeah i played uh, uh football and basketball uh, mostly and and uh went to college i played football and basketball there okay cool and um you know it was you know sports and athletics has really been a part of my life right um, right forever for sure for <laughs> sure now now um what what's maybe one thing and, and you talked about because I'm I'm from Iowa I didn't I didn't grow up on a farm but you know I'm I'm very familiar with the good old Midwest and things like that but and you, you kind of talked about the hard work and working on a farm and stuff like that but maybe between growing up on a farm growing up in a small small community a small town in Nebraska and and then also um, you know being involved in sports as you were growing up what's maybe one or two uh, lessons from kind of the childhood that. You you would um, you you've kind of taken away Adam and they're still really relevant in your life today. Um, I would say that you know just you know the value of hard work for sure. Um, yeah, I, I think that you know there's a, there's something to be said when you know you're growing up on a farm you 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 end up putting all this work in on the front end mm-hmm. and your whole crop and your whole thing could be wiped out in, in one storm. Absolutely. Right. So, um, you know, you're, you're doing all this work, you're doing all this planning and then all of a sudden it's like, uh, what, 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 I, I just lost everything. Yep. Right. So, um, you know, I think, I think just doing that and just being really, um, persistent and diligent with, with what you do every day. It's like, that's kind of where I get this, you know, I got this quote, um, you know, you're, you're not always going to be motivated. So you have to be disciplined, right? Right. The crops sure. aren't going to plant themselves. Mm-hmm. Like the, mm-hmm. the cattle and stuff need to be fed, right? Like you have to water them. You have to go fix fences. You got to do all these things that, you know, seemingly, you know, a lot of times there isn't a return for your money right right away. It's like, right. But it's, it's kind of taking care of your environment. Mm-hmm. It's taking care of, uh, the things that need to be done, right? Even, right, right. You know, even if it's hard, even if it sucks, even if it, you know, I, I don't, you know, want to go out and do that right, right away. Right. Um, so I think, I think just the, you know, I remember on my resume, I always used to put Midwestern work ethic. There you go. Right. Yeah. And, and yep. I'd go into some interviews and they'd be like, well, what's that? I said, well, there's nobody that's going to outwork me. Mm. Right. And, and I, I think that's a blessing and a curse. Mm. Right. Because I don't really know how to take a break and take time down. Right, right. right? I, my mentality is just work harder, put your head up against the wall. Like, here's a problem. Like, do we go through the wall? Do we go around the wall? Do we go over it? Do we build another wall? Right. To, you know, to, to uh, I don't know. So, um, so I think I think those are a lot of the lessons. But um, the other thing that I that I've um, taken away, I think, was. You know, we always sat down for lunch, right? We always sat down um, for dinner and supper, mm-hmm. right? And and I remember my my grandparents would always be like, "Yep, you have, you always you always just make a, a extra food because somebody might come in, right?" And 
so there was always this open invitation of uh, welcoming, mm -hmm. right? It's not like, oh, I'm sorry, I had, didn't, didn't plan for that, right? right? right. So um, even out here, I, I think that, you know, I try to live in such a way where, you know, I have an open house, Beautiful. right, to, mm -hmm. to let people come in and I've had, I've helped people out right, um, right. In, in staying temporarily or sometimes their temporary became really long time, right? right. right? But, um, you know, I, I live with, I think, a, an idea that it's not a, it's not a scarcity mentality where if I give so much away, then there's not any left for me, mm. right? I, I think you have to get out of that mindset that, um, you know, it kind of goes along with that go-giver book. It's like the kind of, kind of the more you give away, the more you can receive. Absolutely. Right. It's like, yes. it, I, if I'm holding all of these things in my hands and somebody's trying to give me something, I have no room to, to take it. Right, right. Right. But, but if I can kind of give some of these things away, okay, now I've, you know, it's kind of like emptying yourself to, to receive mm -hmm. more. I like right. That, yeah. Um, I, but it's also, I try not to confuse it with, I'm going to give this away in order to get something. Right. Like that's, right. I think that's the wrong mentality. It's like, it's like what what kind of uh, joyfulness in your heart is it that you're you're giving this away, mm -hmm. you know, and and you trust that, you know, there'll be something else for you, all right? or it'll come around full circle, and you yeah. know somebody else will, you know, help you out in the future. Absolutely, so. yeah, yeah. I mean, it just goes back to to having that faith. You know, what I mean, trusting that God will will provide. If God guides, God provides. So now now you mentioned. Uh, playing uh, football and, and basketball in college. Is that correct? Yep. Okay, so um, where did you go to college? Kind of what was, uh, you know, like your experience there like? Uh, and then kind of like what did you study? And, and then we'll just kind of move on from, from there. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I played, I played football and basketball in college. I, uh, I played, I went there to play basketball. Um, I ended up having a, an academic scholarship. Okay. So um, I didn't really have a scholarship to play the sports. I just liked playing sports. For sure, so, yeah, okay. So in some ways it was really great yeah. because I didn't have the pressure to play. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I, I also was on a team that was really loaded and, and I didn't really play much Right, right. on, on the team in basketball, uh -huh. right? Um, I was on a team that actually were getting inducted into our college's Athletic Hall of Fame. But that's cool. I get to go back for this year, so yeah, that's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then uh, my second year I, I went out and I... I played football, I tried out for the football team and, and uh, ended up doing that. And um, unfortunately, around the second year, I ended up having a neck injury and, mm. and having to, um, you know, that, that kind of cut some of my dreams of, of sure. playing football mm -hmm. short. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's going to be part of my, my story that we'll, pro that we'll probably get into into later. But, um, but yeah, it was, it was something that, you know, sports had always been – kind of my whole life Absolutely. you know that's that was my identity mm -hmm. right like you just mm -hmm. you know um you know like i'm the basketball player or yep. i play football right you have this fraternity of of teammates for sure right and and everybody has your back and and uh like you're in the grind all day every day you know um basically competing for this you know this next game this yep. championship yep. or or whatever, and and um, you know, I, I just I really like that uh, the camaraderie and stuff that's that's built in that the adversity that you go through, and um, it's I think it it's very uh, it's very impactful. Absolutely, I, I I mean I firmly believe that community and and human connection is is in our DNA. You know, it's it's very valuable. It's very important. So um, now, wh wh where did you go to college at then? Uh, I went to Hastings College. Okay. In, in okay. Nebraska, yep, small yep. NAI school. Yeah, I, I went. To, I graduated from the University of Sioux Falls. So. Oh yeah, we played but, you guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when I was at USF, USF was still NAIA, and they were, you know. I went. I think all four years of college, they were they were in the national championship game. Yeah, they were. Really uh, now good. they're they're division two, and they're still still doing a, a great job. I think they actually a couple guys off their team last year are uh, made made uh, fifty three man rosters in the NFL. So oh, wow. you know, from a little a little liberal arts college in <laughs> Sioux Falls, South Dakota, they they've definitely produced a lot of great football teams and football players. So um, now 
let's uh, let's talk about let's let's go into that let's go into a little bit of, of that neck injury and let's let's talk about kind of like you know you already talked a little bit about how it kind of slowed things up for you af- athletically um, kind of what what happened and then kind of what was the process that you had to work through kind of personally and mentally to overcome that specific situation um, yeah this 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 might get a little emotional that's okay that's <laughs> but, fine. Uh, yeah, I, uh, you know, I, th- I think that, you know, when, you're, when your whole identity is wrapped up in what you do rather than who you are, um, you know, when that ends up being taken away, you're just kind of, you're, you're left with, you know, kind of just being, you just feel empty. Mm-hmm. Right. And, um, you know, it's, you know, I, I, I prayed every night, like, you know, God fixed my, fix my neck. Like, you know, this was what I was born to do. This is what I want to do. Right. And, you know, there's, there was this, um, it was like, I, I just knew he was gonna, I just knew he was gonna heal me. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just, um, I had a, had a, an experience in high school where, I, I did have a miracle, and, and uh, I feel like there was a knee injury that I had, and, and uh, I wasn't going to tell anybody about it. And the next next day, I prayed, and like literally, it was it was gone. Right. The next right, day, and I was like, right. "Wow, like this prayer works, right?" Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Um, you know, you know, I got hurt and kept trying to come back, and it and it didn't get any better, right? And it's like. God, like I'm doing all the right things. Like I'm, I'm mm. doing, I'm doing this. I go to church. I, I pray. I, you know, and and why am I not getting better? Right. So it goes, it goes back to, um, you know, God doesn't, you know, have to answer our prayers, mm. right? Um, I heard a, um, a, a pastor. I think it was Darius Daniels. He he had a quote uh, recently. He said. We pray for God to change the uh, season we are in when God uses the season we are in to change something in us. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was like, wow. Like, um, you know, there was lots of things that, that I needed to, you know, be able to get over, right? Like the, the fact, I had no empathy for people that got hurt, right? right? Because right. if I got hurt, I fought through it, I pushed through it, and I overcame and succeeded, right? right? So I'm yeah. like, everybody should be able to do that, right? I, I didn't really have a lot of compassion, and I thought people were wimps, mm. right? Yep. And, yep. and now I'm that wimp, right, that can't overcome and, and just do something through his hard work, right? right? Or right. doing more, right? So, uh, so that kind of, uh, that was really... Uh, uh, an impactful thing that happened to me. And, and there was probably, I would say, about seven years of uh, quote-unquote depression that I went through uh, that uh, it was just like I just didn't really care what I did, right? I was, I was on track to maybe either go to um, physical therapy school or pharmacy school, and, and I was just like, I don't, I don't really care. Like I, I just wanted to play football and I wanted to become an all American. And you know, I, I, I didn't think that I was good enough to play in the NFL, but I just wanted to play, yeah. play college. Right. I gotcha. So, yeah, for sure. Um, so when that was taken away and you know, there's, there's other family dynamics that I think that, that played into kind of also the psychology of me wanting to play and like, you're holding the family together because, you know, you have all this adversity at home and, but, you know, sports is what kind of brought and kept the family together. Right. 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 So, um, you know, so that actually changed the trajectory of my path of like, I was just going to go become a physical therapist or something and, and work for 40 years, get married, retire and, uh, you know, live a comfortable life. Right. 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 Well, um, through all of that kind of not really caring about what I was going to do, I, I was still high functioning, right? I, I knew all the things to still do. I, I graduated um, with the second highest GPA in my college. I think it was ended up, was fourth in my class. Mm-hmm. Um, so it wasn't like I 
had checked out right, completely. Right, right, right. Um, but I think that's where that whole, you know, you have to be disciplined because you're not always going to be motivated. I was not motivated, mm. but I was disciplined as heck. Right, right. Right, so I could still do all these things. And people on the outside, they just think, man, he's, he's still got it all together. But inside, I was just like, I was crushed. Mm. Um, so, you know, it's it uh, that got me out to Denver. And I was like, I, I went back to school to study. I, I had a degree in biology and chemistry. Okay. And uh, I went back to school to study graphic design of all things. Because I'm like, well, I, 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 I'm creative. I, I like that aspect mm-hmm, of it. And, mm-hmm. and when I moved out here, I ended up starting a, uh, starting working at 24-Hour Fitness okay. as a personal trainer. Mm-hmm. And was pretty soon I was just, I mean, I was working 50, 60 hours a week going to school full time and I'm thinking, man, I, I really like just working with these people, right? It's, it's kind of like one-on-one coaching. Mm-hmm. And, and I coached football for four years at Hastings college after I got hurt. Um, so that kind of put me into, kept me a part of the team and, and, uh, gave me something else to do on the side. And, and, um, you know, it, it was, uh, it was really fun, uh, to, to do that. Right. right. And, um, you know, and then, you know, I, I ended up starting a, my own personal training business okay, cool. out here. Um, probably, gosh, it's probably been a 17 years ago now, okay. 17, yep, 18 yep. years ago. So, um, you know, and that's, that's kind of where I, where I became an entrepreneur. I didn't, I didn't really know what I was going to do. I didn't really know how, how to do it. And, um, you know, it just, uh, you, you know, sometimes you just have to, take some steps absolutely and then these paths open up right you, you mm-hmm. figure it out as, as you go and um and that's you know that's that's pretty much wh- where i and how i got to where i am today and you know obviously i had i had mentors around uh-huh. me um there i mean i read a lot i i always wanted to be you know whatever i did i always wanted to be the best right mm-hmm. i took acting classes for a while i took voice lessons for a while like some of those things didn't really work out, right? Um, but I've tried a lot of things, you know. Um, sometimes people here at the gym, they tell me that I'm the most interesting man in the world. It's awesome, yeah. They're like, is there anything you haven't, do, <laughs> haven't, haven't done? And right, right. I, I always kind of make this the sly joke at the end. I'm like, yeah, relationships. There you go, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. You know. Um, There's always something to work there, on, right? There's always something, right? <laughs> so, um, but that's, that's kind of where I, how I got mm. to where I am. Cool. Now I, I wanna I wanna touch on Adam this 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 you know was, you mentioned I think about a seven year period after you got injured you know you were still super disciplined you were still taking care of your business all that type of stuff but but you said you had no motivation so so how did how, was there was there another kind of uh, turning point in your life um, where kind of that you got that motivation you got that fire back how how, how did you kind of work through that what what was what was that like in regards to like, you know, getting past that seven year period of, of struggling with the depression and maybe being in a darker place than you, you'd ever been previously in your life? Um, well, I, I've always had a, had a desire to help people. Okay. Um, and, and I think, uh, relationships, um, like I, I love just, you know, making people smile. Mm-hmm. I like, uh, I like it when, you know, I can, I can help somebody achieve their goals. Um, you know, when I was in that period, I was coaching football, right, you know, right. so I was still part of kind of a community. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it didn't allow me to really isolate myself. Um, as much as I, I'm, I'm pretty introverted. Right. Okay. Um, people would think that I'm really extroverted. Right. Right. I really, you know, I, I can, I can do that, but I really, you know, like my alone time, I get recharged yep. by, by being by myself. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. It allows me to, I think, um, I think, uh, go go out and 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 look at people differently, mm. right? Because my my brain is always going, it's always on, it's always calculating, it's always assessing, it's always analyzing, um, and I think that that when it's like that, that that's what makes it tiring. Right, right. So, so in order to get through all those things, I think it was really just, just my community, my coaches, the teammates. Um, you know, even, even today, you know, just coming into work, like 
I work with a lot of uh, female volleyball athletes. I work with a lot of other youth athletes, mm -hmm. and and I would say that the the kids kind of keep me young. Right. right? For they, sure. For sure. I, I love coming in and and helping them to get to places in their in their own athletic career mm -hmm. or or help them improve. You just see that smile on their face. You see them kind of that light bulb turn on when they get it. You're just like, wow, that's that's really cool, right? Mm -hmm. And then. And then to have them come back and just be so grateful and, and their parents are so grateful and, you know, but, it, but it's a process, right? And, and I think going through everything that I've went through, it's, it's allowed me to be more relatable mm. to people and have, you know, it doesn't all have to be done tomorrow, right? right? right. It's, we, but you, it does take time, right? And sometimes the time frame that you wish it was in, um, isn't realistic right, right or right. something sets you back right and and since i've been through that and i know i mean maybe it's you know maybe it's seven years maybe it's two years maybe it's maybe it's two months right um a lot of times we just look back and we're we're kind of like wow i can't i came from i came from there and i'm here right now. right right yeah, so yeah. um so those are the things that i think kind of helped helped get me through Perfect. through that love it man love it so let's uh let's 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 touch on um, just kind of like where you're at, uh, kind of today. I mean, you, 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 you wear a lot of different hats. You've, like you said, you've done a lot of different things. Um, but you, you're a strength coach. You, 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 uh, you're here at, and, and how do you pronounce, is it Landau? Uh, Lando performance. Lando, Lando performance here in, in Denver, Colorado. And, and, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the man that owns this gym He's now the head strength and conditioning coach for the Denver Broncos. Is that correct? Yes. That so, is. so, so you you're in a pretty prestigious place, training athletes and things of that nature. How how did you kind of like, uh, and, and you said you opened up your own personal training place. So, how did you go from your own personal training kind of studio and working in that type of setting to being at at this gym specifically, and maybe some of the things that were in between the two? Uh, well, I think it's I think it's all about uh, again relationships, mm -hmm. right? I, I think I met Lauren um, at a uh, muscle activation techniques uh, uh, seminar okay. or, or or continuing education class, maybe twelve years earlier. Okay, maybe. Okay, and um, and we've just you know there's certain people that you kind of run into and Absolutely. you just have this kind of connection, mm -hmm. like you just mm -hmm. gravitate and and I remember. Um, you know, Lauren and I would stay in touch and I don't, I knew what he was doing, um, with, you know, when he was at a, at another facility before he, before he created this one. And, um, you know, it's just, he always said, when I get, when I get my place, do you want to, do you want to come over here and, and, uh, and train? I'm like, absolutely. For sure. Right? Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. I mean, Lauren's, Lauren's the, you know, arguably the best movement strength coach in the country right right, right. and the denver broncos have him yeah right? and yeah and the amount of people that he's mentored um across the country mm. um and the people that he's learned from it's like it, it's it, he's imparted and passed on that that uh you know expertise to us right mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and uh which has created a, a really great uh facility here and and uh you know we're you know we operate you know kind of our under the Lando umbrella um, and are responsible for our for our own businesses and he, right, he's right. kind of created this environment for us to thrive right which Perfect. which I think goes back to just it, it just shows his own uh, generosity his own kind of just trust that um, the people that he's mentored can can do what he um, has taught them right right and um, and so that's kind of how I how I met Lauren and, and kind of got over here and, and he's still one of my uh, best friends and, and colleagues. Uh, I, you know, I, I shoot uh, photos for the Denver Broncos, uh, mainly the, the cheerleaders. So mm -hmm. I'm on the field at the home game. So awesome. I get to see Lauren now. Yep. I, I take yep. photos uh, of him when he's out there. And, and uh, it's just, it's funny how things kind of come full circle and everything is, is so intertwined. Absolutely. And, uh, and, and Lauren's, Lauren's just a, a great, great person and a, and a great coach and a, and a great mentor. Cool, cool. So um, you just mentioned, uh, you know, mentor. Has there been maybe another individual 
or, or individuals that have been super impactful in regards to mentorship. And that could be, you know, maybe one-on-one -on -one personally, or just maybe, you know, listening to a podcast or maybe from afar. Um, so is, is there maybe one or two other people in regards to mentorship, uh, Adam, that have been very impactful in your life and you becoming the man that you are today? Uh, yeah, I think, um, yeah, there's a former client of mine. His name was uh, George Harris. He, okay. he passed away a, a few years ago. And, and uh, you know, he was really, uh, we would have have all these uh, very interesting uh, conversations. Uh, you know, he was an African-American and uh, had a, some different political views than I did. And, and we always talked about how, uh, how we could always have conversations and it be respectful. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and I would ask him certain things like, why do you see this, this way? And he would ask me kind of something similar. And, and we always had kind of, I, I think we both learned a lot from each other. Um, you know, but it was, it was a way where I wasn't trying to change his mind. He wasn't trying to change my mind, but there was kind of this, uh, this respect there and, mm -hmm. and he helped me through a lot of a lot of things um you know when i was going through um some other uh you know as an entrepreneur you you try different things and you kind of you know uh take chances yeah. and uh you fail you know and and he was there helping me through some of those things um relationally challenges uh that he uh was a great uh ear mm -hmm. to hear from mm -hmm. and you know it's you know, and, and he was, you know, 10, 10 years or so older than me. Um, but it was, he, he would always come back and say, you know, that I was teaching him as much as I kept saying, like, you're, you're teaching me. Like, right. you know, so, um, and there was a, there was a book that, that I read. I'm, I'm not going to be able to remember the name of it, but um, we always said there was no throwbacks, right? We don't, mm. we don't just have this relationship because it's convenient and then we, throw it away when it's not, um, mm. you know, when it, when, when it doesn't fit our needs anymore. Yep, right. Yep. So, um, so he's, he, he'd probably be one of the, one of the guys. And then, um, my college roommate, uh, Pete Ferguson, um, he, uh, he was the one that kept dragging me into the gym in college and we were basketball teammates and, uh, I ended up having the, um, uh, ability to train his daughter she'd fly out here from Lincoln or drive out and and I would train her for a while and and uh you know just how things come kind of full circle yeah like Pete yeah Pete um he's you know one of the one of the best guys that I know and and um you know he he's really the reason why I'm I'm doing what I'm doing today mm -hmm. and uh and I, I tell him that I, I don't think he quite believes me uh but uh but I but it those those two guys specifically and then um you know obviously i mentioned lauren and then uh my my two pastors that were at red rock sean johnson and and chad brugman were were you know they they had some really um impactful sermons and messages and and when you're at a church the size of, of that sometimes you don't get to meet them and, and know them on a personal level and and I've got to know them a little bit awesome. um, outside of that. And, and it's, uh, you know, as brief as a, a lot of our interactions is, are, uh, they, uh, they both have been really uh, impactful on, on my life cool. Uh, cool. too. So Awesome. Now, I, I want to just touch on being a strength coach. I, um, I, I, if somebody's going to listen to this, maybe they're a younger person, maybe they're, you know, in college right now going to get their undergraduate. Um, I, I have um, uh, a friend that's up at uh, Washington State, and I've seen him from afar, just kind of the, the grind um, that he's had to go through being um, a, a Division I um, assistant strength and conditioning coach. I mean, he's been to a lot of different colleges. I mean, he's done, you know, a lot of internships where, you know, he's getting paid very little, sleeping on, you know, friends' couches and things like that. So if somebody wants to become become a strength coach, what is kind of the, the process for that? And then, you know, obviously there's there's different breaks that we get. There's, you know, I think a lot of it comes back to connections and things like that. But just also maybe touch on, uh, Adam, kind of the grind and, and just that mindset of, hey, you know what? Yeah, we see the strength coaches that are at the Denver Broncos and in the NFL and Division One colleges, but that's 
that's a minority rather than the majority and, and the salaries that they're getting. So maybe just um, talk to that individual or individuals that want to get into strength and conditioning and then maybe just in, give them that encouragement of, hey, this is the mindset that you need to have coming into this profession. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think the most important mindset that you have have to have is one of it's not going to happen quickly. Right. 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 Like you, you, you have to put in your time. Mm -hmm. Like there's, um, like you have to wait for the time for you to be elevated to the position that you want. Right. right? Mm -hmm. It's not, it might be five years. It might be 10 years. Yep. Right. Um, too many kids and people getting out that even that I've talked to and, and mentored a little bit, like they, they think, Oh, I graduated from college. Oh, I did this internship here. Oh, now I should just let the clients come in, right? right? Like, right. why am I not making eighty thousand dollars a year? Why am I not making a hundred thousand dollars a year, right? I, uh, I think it's, you know, they they have an unrealistic expectation that that they're owed something, uh -huh. right? And and so that's the first thing I think setting setting kind of a realistic expectation for yourself. And and I'm not saying it's not possible in a shorter period of time, but I think if your expectation is such that it sets you up for disappointment, that, that's what you're going to be. You're going to be disappointed. You're going to be unmotivated, right? So, so you have to, um, one, I think, be surrounded by the, and, and have some of the best education that you can get in terms mm -hmm. of biomechanics, exercise physiology, um, you know, have a, you know, obviously your, your training certification is important because, you know, a college or, uh, you know, uh, a gym is going to look at that. A, a professional team is going to look at those things, um, and then, and then, you know, maybe maybe training professional athletes isn't actually what you want to do. Right. Like, right. I mean, there's a lot that goes into it. That, you know, I, I've trained s several professional athletes, and and there's there's a high pressure in that. Mm -hmm. um, you're dealing with a lot of people's schedules that may not be conducive to yours. Like, right. do you want to train a guy when he gets off the plane and come to the gym at 1 a.m., you know, so you can see him for an hour, and then you're going to go back to bed and then get up for your work regular clients at 7? Um, those are decisions that you have to make that, you know, there's some glamour that goes around with, oh, I, you know, I work with, you know, I'm not going to not name any names, right, but, you right. know, this professional athlete yep, on, on this yep team or, or, or this one and, you know, and, and, you know, that looks cool to people on the outside, but, you know, I, I get a kick out of just training the, the youth athletes, mm -hmm. right? The, the, uh, you know, the corporate executives, Absolutely. the stay at home moms, right? Yeah. Um, the working moms, uh, cause you know, they're in here grinding every day and, and, and they, they, uh, they have great, um, goals and things for them. So, um, so your education obviously is important, but then, you know, as important, like, I think you should take as many psychology classes as you can. I, I think you need to understand, um, how to, uh, relate to people. Mm. You know, I think you're going to wear a lot of different hats. So the more that you can, you know, the, the more diverse you can be and the more relatable. I, I heard somebody say one time that if, if you haven't found a commonality with the person that you're talking to you haven't asked them enough questions mm. so um, whether they're whether it's your race your socioeconomic background your political persuasion whatever it is like some of those things may not have a place in the in the training room but that doesn't mean that you can't work with them that doesn't mean that you can't find a way to relate to them right and I think the more that you are able to um, create that connection with people. We've talked about that before. Um, that's why people are going to come see you again, right? I, I think they, if they come in, and I mean, we've talked about this the whole podcast. Life is hard, right? Absolutely. Things are going to beat you down. Like yep. you're coming in with these people that you know, work beat them down, life beat them down, families beat them down. You know, whatever they're going through, you don't you don't know, right? So if they if I can make this person feel better leaving the gym. Um, and have a little mini success, then they're going to come back. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's, uh, I think it's just creating that environment where, where people want to want to see you again. For sure. Now in regards to people skills 
and, and just being able to connect with people, relate to people, things like that. What What's maybe one or two people skills that you feel like are invaluable in regards to being a trainer and then also just in life overall and, and, and generally speaking? Uh, well, I think that you... One, have we talked about it earlier? Uh, I think you have to have a certain amount of empathy and compassion. Mm. Okay. Um, because those, uh, you know, you don't know what this person is going to come in with, right? Um, I think it also helps to not be so set on the on your plan and sticking to it. Like, right. I mean, we have a blueprint when our clients come in and, and a certain maybe periodization scheme mm-hmm. or a plan for the month, right? But the, things change, right? Absolutely. They might come in, they, they don't feel good, right? Um, they injured themselves, right? I, I've got to be flexible. I've Absolutely, got to be able to, yes. I've got to be able to change something up and still make it be appropriate, right? I, I have to be, I have to have a, a reason for doing what I'm doing mm-hmm. with that person, right? I'm not just randomly trying to, put all these things together and then um, call it a workout, right? I, I want to I wanna make sure that it's, it's uh, appropriate um, and it's going to fit in with kind of their, their long-term goals, mm-hmm. right? Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think those things, I think those things are, are really important to do. Cool. Now, where, where does, uh, where, where do you think listening and being able to be a good listener comes into kind of the equation of um, the importance of, of people skills. Uh, I, th- I think listening is actually probably the most important. I don't know why I didn't say that. <laughs> no, but that's okay. For, it's cool. It's thank cool. You for, I'm, I'm um, learning. I'm learning to, <laughs> to listen. The podcast has really helped me. So Yeah, I think, um, you know, I think, that is a, I think that is a very important skill to have. Um, it's important to be able to just um, shut your mouth mm-hmm. and be quiet, <laughs> you know, and let right. them – and let them – uh, say what they need to, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I know that I'm always asking for feedback from my clients, especially my uh, sports uh, performance clients, my youth athletes. You know, I'll ask them, where did you feel that? Or what was different about that, right? Because sometimes they don't know or mm-hmm. they're not aware, right? I, I want to bring the awareness to them, right? So mm-hmm. I want to make sure that they're hearing and listening to what I said, right? Right, right. Because I could say the color red and that could mean 10 different things to 10 different people, right? So I want to make sure that when I'm communicating and and this goes along with your communication skills, which is probably the most important one, um, is that are they receiving what I'm saying, right? And if they're not, I haven't, I need to ask them a question to see how that is, right? Because, you know, um, I've asked questions about so what did you hear me say right sometimes I've had to have some difficult conversations with an athlete and their parent right and you know sometimes you even have to do that with the parent right because the parent hears you say something and they think oh I'm I'm getting down on this kid and they're like then now they're on the kid's back and be like yeah see I told you so and I'm like wait 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 wait, wait. that's actually not what I mm. said mm. like that's what you interpreted right but that's, I want to make sure before we leave that we're, we're on the same page. That's right? good. Absolutely. I think that, I think that um, e- even even I am, I, I'm guilty of it too. Like we, we hear something and then all of a sudden we assume, you know, this or that or the other thing. So, right, right. So having those, um, those conversations up front and being really clear um, really help with, uh, you know, ex- setting expectations, um, you know, maybe eliminating some disappointment, mm-hmm. right? And and also being realistic. Mm. Beautiful. So let's let's let's. I want to talk about like just how you motivate your clients um, and and the people that you train because you know motivation. There's there's a lot of different um, kind of takes on motivation because motivation can be like we 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 read a quote and we get motivated and it kind of kind of ties back to kind of that quote that you were talking about just you know having that discipline we're not always going to feel like doing things but if we have that discipline we're going to accomplish what we need to accomplish but so in regards to kind of like motivation or maybe just getting your um, clients and athletes kind of fired up excited about the workout and about life how, how do you kind of incorporate that motivation into your training your clients and, and your athletes uh 
I think it starts with energy. Energy, right? okay, I think perfect. It's, I, you know, when my clients come in, I'm, I'm either yelling at them or like saying, hey, Mary. Right, you know, right, or, right. Or, or maybe there's something, you know, everybody's a little bit different. Absolutely. Um, because, and everybody, I, I, I just, I, I think back to this, there's this volleyball athlete that came in this summer and um, she wasn't really wanting to be here. You could tell by her energy. Right, like, right. Mom was making her, but, and she'd come in three times a week. And, and every time that she would come in, I'd be like, hey, how you doing today? Right, right. And she would be like, oh, I'm tired. <laughs> and I'd be like, all right, cool. Um, you know, and, and every day it was the same thing, right? right? And right, every right. day, sometimes I'd even say, oh, let me guess you're tired. Right, and right. Yep, pretty yep. soon she's cracking a smile. Mm-hmm, she's doing all mm-hmm. this stuff, right? And and by the end of the summer, you know, I, I told her mom, like, I think she secretly likes to come in. Here, yeah. Right? Yeah, I, think, yep, yep. I think sometimes you just have to, you know, again, you're, you're meeting these athletes and these kids where they are, yes, right? Like yes. it, it's an environment that's maybe a little bit intimidating to come in, right? So again, it goes back to, I have to have some empathy and some compassion, right? I, I work out with a lot of my clients mm-hmm. um, and that helps me also understand and remember what it's like to go through what I'm having them do, Love that. right? Yep. Um, because, you know, we kind of forget, right? And then when the athletes kind of see us struggling or us not being perfect or us making some mistakes, it kind of it adds a little bit more of uh, some humanity mm-hmm, to mm-hmm. what we're doing. Absolutely. Right? Because sometimes I think they think, well, as coaches, we, we know it all, right? Mm-hmm. Well, I know a lot, right? But I, I'm not, I think as soon as you say that you know it all, like it, you, you've shut the process Absolutely. off to learning. Agree. Right? So um, I, I'm always in, in, you know, I got that from Tom Purvis, one of my mentors mm-hmm. in Oklahoma City. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know that was one of Lauren's uh, mentors also. And, and uh, I, I learned a lot of great things down there, it, just from a standpoint of perspective, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Because, you know, a squat is a squat is a squat until it isn't, right? right I mean, there's right. lots of different variations of, of it, you know. Um, and, you know, I think the, the more that we can again, reframe sometimes for our clients when they come in, um, you know, either their lack of motivation or their motivation. And, and, uh, you know, I think those, those things help. And, and everybody, I wish there was a, a cookie cutter way to say, you just, just go read this, just do these 10 steps and, and boom, you're going to, you'll have it. Right. I don't, it doesn't, doesn't work that way. It goes back to, I think you're, comment about listening mm-hmm. right I, I have to listen to that Absolutely. athlete right yeah. I have to listen to this client mm-hmm. and and then I have to be honest with you know you know do they really want to be here mm-hmm. right I, mm-hmm. I, I hope they do right maybe I'm not the right person for them right maybe right. my personality is as good as it is maybe they fit better with somebody else yep. right yep. I mean um, and I, and I, and again I'm not going to I mean I've had clients leave and, and train with another trainer in here because they felt like that was, they had a better fit personality yeah, wise. I'm yeah. like, and of course the trainer's a little bit kind of like feels bad and doesn't, you know, and I'm like, I, I, I said, I don't own that person. Yeah. Like that's, they'll, they'll be somebody else. Yep. And, and yep. I think that's important to not, you know, be too caught up into, yeah, am I sad that they left? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, I never want anybody to leave, but, you know, I also understand that I'm not going to be the right fit for everybody. Right, right. Cool. Now I, I want to. We're we're coming up on almost an hour here, so we're gonna start moving towards the end. But I, I still want to um, touch on a couple things here. Now, um, in the introduction, I said you're a photographer. You mentioned doing photography um, for the Denver Broncos. Sounds like specifically for for the cheerleaders and things like that. So how, how did how did you come across photography? And then kind of like just what type of joy do you get out of um, being being a photographer, Adam? Um, well, it's, uh, you know, again, it's, it's all about relationships and people mm-hmm. that you meet. And, uh, you know, I, I'd, I'd been doing photography as a hobby for a long time. Okay. And I was a model and I still model and, and mm-hmm. act here in Denver. Mm-hmm. And there was a, a guy who, again, he's, he'd be probably what I would consider my photography mentor. Okay. Um, his name's Rob Hawthorne, uh, great guy. And, and, uh, he asked me to help him you know, I think it was maybe eight years ago now, um, on a trip down in Mexico and, and through that, you know, I just, 
developed these relationships and, and uh, he kept asking me to come back and then, you know, they needed another photographer for uh, the game days. And, okay. And so it, it just kind of, you know, I, I wouldn't say that I was necessarily looking for that to right, happen. Right, yeah. Right, but I think uh, when you have a passion for something and you want to try to be really good at it, mm -hmm. like I was always asking, Rob, how do I do this? Or how does this lighting, you know, how does this lighting work? And, and, uh, and I think he kind of saw that. And, and again, Rob's a very uh, generous and very just um, open person. And he's always willing to help. Cool. And he's willing to teach. And, uh, and, and I kind of just took that. And, uh, and again, it didn't happen overnight, right? It's like, he, I'd show him pictures and he'd be like, your exposure is too hot. Why is this, you know? And I'm like, I know, I know. And, you know, but he does it in such a way where he, he's always wanting you to be better, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and I think you go through these things where, you know, you just think, just like training, oh, I should just, I just buy this camera. I, I learn a couple of things and then I I, uh, I should know it, right? But um, but I, I, I love photography. Um, it just, it helps with the creative side of my brain. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm, I'm very analytical and I'm very creative. So I think the training part is the physical and analytical part for me. Um, and then the, the photography gives me a creative outlet where I can just kind of, I can kind of go and, and do something different mm. for a little while. It, it helps me recharge my yeah, brain. Yeah. And, uh, and I like, again, I, I love showing people photos of themselves or capturing a moment. I, I think on my Instagram um, I say uh, uh, capturer of moments mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, because that, that's what photography is. It's, it's a snapshot in time. Right, right, right. It's like I use that analogy in my training. It's like if I take a snapshot in time of you running, like what is your position right now, mm -hmm. right? The same thing can happen. It's like I want to capture a moment. I want to capture emotion. I, wanna, I want to take a photo that somebody looks at and is like, wow, that's really, that's really cool, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um and then when I give that to the person that may not even know that I took the photo, they're like, wow. Like, yeah. like that just brings me a lot of joy because cool. it's just, um, you know, it's something that they can never go back and get that moment again. Right. Right. right yeah. But I got it for them. I like that. Yeah. So cool. Cool. All right. So I, I want to also touch on you being um, the director of a CBD technology startup company. So just maybe share a little bit about what, what, that those words mean and then also maybe just touch on cbd um because i personally have you know just just being in colorado yeah. you know being kind of in health and fitness and listening to a lot of podcasts and having a, a variety of guests in regards to the fitness industry on my podcast like cbd is something that's that comes up often it's a it's a topic of, of conversation often um and and i personally i've heard nothing but if, if you get you know legit real stuff you, I've, I've heard nothing but positives. So just maybe talk about what is being a director of a CBD technology startup company? What does that look like? What does that entail for you right now personally? And then how did you kind of learn about CBD? And, and how is that um, maybe a part of, of your, your personal life? Well, I think, uh, you know, we talked about earlier, like I didn't really start to, out to become an entrepreneur. Right, right. right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. and through training, through all of these different um, whether it's acting, whether it's modeling, whether it's photography, mm -hmm. you know, you, you meet people, yes. right? And I met this, uh, I met this guy, Bob Mordini, and uh, he owned this building that was one of the very first gyms I was ever in 15 okay. years ago. And um, I'd actually been dealing with a back injury for, from just playing year round flag football and there's a cumulative mm -hmm. effect of stress mm -hmm. and, and just never taking a break. And uh, I walked in and I saw him and he was trying to get a hold of me. He'd been, um, you know, working on this project for, I think it was maybe about uh, two, year and a half, two years before I saw him. And uh, I walked in and kind of like hunched over, back was hurting. He's like, what is wrong with you? And I was like, oh, God, my back's killing me. I'm, and I literally for a year had not been able to work out. Um, mm -hmm. I was having to take knees when I was uh, training clients. Wow. I was sitting down to train clients because so I just I just couldn't um, I just couldn't really function. I couldn't sleep at night. Mm -hmm. It was just making me really fatigued. And he slides this bottle over um, to me. And he says, "Put this on your back." And we're sitting in Starbucks, and 
I was like, dude, I've tried everything else. I've done dry needling, massage, right. ibuprofen, like, like nothing is working. Like, I, I was really, really ready to go and, and talk to a neurosurgeon and mm. see, like, because mm. you know, as an athlete and trainer, we know our bodies. Yep. yep. I, I'm like, all these other check marks that I've tried didn't work. So it's got to be one of these two things, right? So I put it on, and I'm like, holy cow! Like, a couple minutes later, I mean, it's probably went from like an eight down to like a three or four I'm like wow I don't know this is some voodoo <laughs> so um, he ends up sliding the, he says well just keep it you you know take it home and I, I used it once a day uh, on my back and and uh, three weeks later I, I remember going to get in my car and sit down on a bench and I'm like I usually have to brace myself and I realize I'm not hurting anymore mm. like my, my pain and everything is gone like I've been sleeping at night doesn't hurt to roll over when I go to, when I'm in bed and and so I was like I called him up I'm like all right dude um, I'm gonna be a director of marketing and they says um, okay well let's come in and talk about it so because uh, I was like if this works for me like I have so many people that can benefit Absolutely. from this right and it's natural um, there's no side effects there's mm-hmm. no THC mm-hmm. in it so yep. um, I know all my clients, whether professional, whether they're kids, could take it. Like Absolutely. if they're a police officer, anybody who gets drug tested mm-hmm, is not going to mm-hmm. worry about it. So, right. Um, and then I started just giving people samples of it, and they're like, "I don't really." I just tell them it's CBD, which stands for cannabidiol, and um, it's uh, and, and they have great results. And right, right. it happened hundreds and hundreds of times, and I'm like, "There's got to be a time when it doesn't work." Right. Right. But you know. That's that's kind of how I got into it, okay. and and the technology part is is such that we actually have a patent to increase the bioavailability of it. So cool. um, it, it doesn't change the biochemistry of it, but you know most CBDs are well, all CBDs are only going to be ten percent uh, bioavailable. Okay. Like we increase that three to five times through oh, wow. our patented patent pending technology cool, cool. so um, so we're working we're, we're kind of more boutique we're we have a very high quality um, CBD oil um, that we that we use and um, and it's uh, you know it's gonna it's gonna be big for us cool, um, you cool. know it's but again nothing happens overnight mm-hmm. and um, and I think we're about in our third year okay. right now and uh, but we have people calling us they want to use our technology and their product because it works for sure um and we've validated it and proved it works through brain mapping Mm -hmm. um and it's uh it's you know the 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 product's called zero plus zero plus okay um and uh you know it's just stands for zero uh thc Mm -hmm. and um plus meaning it's enhanced okay so 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 if somebody wants to you know check this product out is there is it is there like a brick and mortar here in the Denver Colorado area is it all uh, on a website how, how can somebody get that product um, yeah it's a, it's on our website okay um, if you go to uh, www.zropluscom you can order it online okay or, um, we actually uh, sell it here at Lando performance oh, okay. cool. and uh, there's there's a couple other um, gyms and chiropractors offices that that sell it okay. that, that use it a lot and cool. we have some doctors that use it so um, it's it's uh, I mean it's changed my life it's changed several of my clients lives cool. and, and, Love it. Um, and it's just you know it's you know the, it seems to be the hot buzzword right now and, and and it's kind of the wild wild west a little bit but it is yeah but uh, there's lots of products that don't um, do what people say they are and they can mm-hmm. just put I mean they can put a fraction of it in and right, say there's right. CBD in it, yep, you know, but it's yep. not enough to really uh, do much. But mm-hmm. but we're but we're trying to just you know weather that and and uh, educate people because cool. the education is really what changes people's minds about Absolutely. taking our product versus somebody else's. Yeah. And 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 um, just kind of how you were talking about it, I'm assuming it's a it's a cream then that you just you put on your body, or is it um, come in different forms? Um, no, th- it's an oil, so okay, um, okay. it's it's not a cream, but you uh, you rub it on to uh, whatever area you know, mm-hmm. um, is maybe uh, you have pain or inflammation on uh, and uh, and then we have another one that you can take orally uh, okay. or we you know say sublingually 
um, and uh, and those are basically our, our two products. Um, okay, because cool. They, you know, they uh, they work um, really well. Cool, cool, awesome. Okay, so I want to I want to I, I want to touch on this uh, kind of last topic, and then we'll 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 kind of end things with the final question. But and and you 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 take this wherever you want, Adam. And if you don't really want to go there, that's that's cool. But I I want to ask it. Um, because I think it, it can really um, impact some some people that are going to be listening. But previously, you've you've talked about relationships and and you know maybe uh, an area of your life where there's maybe been a struggle. Okay, and I'm assuming that you're talking about maybe like personal relationships and things like that. So as much as you want to or don't want to, what 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 has kind of been and it, th- those experiences in regards to personal relationships that you've had to really work through or something that you've realized like, hey, I need to work on this in, in my life so that I can attract the person or the people that, that I want to, su- to surround me so that I can be the best version of myself. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I think when you, I think growing up, I don't, I don't know if it was just, I mean, I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one in the world that, that deals with this, but I think that... Um, you know, I've, I'm kind of a perfectionist by nature, right. so uh, I always kind of operate as if I'm not enough, mm-hmm. right? Or I need to be better, mm-hmm. right? And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, somebody's not going to like me because, you know, there's somebody better, mm-hmm. right? So, um, you know, we all, you know, as successful on the outside as, as it appears that that we are with, you know, whether it's the training, the photography, like I've had amazing experiences. Like there's always some insecurities, right? And I think that, um, I think at the end of the day, the, uh, and, and that's probably really one of the things that I'm, I'm trying to get over and work through the most Mm -hmm. is, is just the, the insecurity of, of, you know, uh, not feeling, like you're enough. Mm. And, um, you know, that's, I, I wish it was easier, right? I mean, people, you know, tell me all the time that, you know, you're, uh, you know, you're amazing, right? You know, right. you're doing this. And I, I kind of like, I'm like, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I'm okay. Mm-hmm. Right. I, maybe mm-hmm. I'm, maybe I'm a little bit above average. Like I got, right, right. you know, I, I think there comes a point where, you know, sometimes when you, when you grow up and everything is about, and I think it is important to be humble, but there's like this kind of humility that's like uh, a false kind of like y- you're just taught to say, "Well, no, I, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not really that good, mm. right?" Or because mm-hmm. uh, I don't want to, I don't want somebody else to feel bad, right? right? Or right. I don't want to be up there and, and be seen as cocky, mm-hmm. right? Or arrogant, mm-hmm. right? And then you know, but I think the more and more you, that you tell yourself those things the more you kind of get it wired in your brain that it's like yeah i'm not enough right you like you're having this internal dialogue where or i am all, all the time of like you know it's you know it's you know uh there's somebody better or right you know and and i think that's also probably what drives me a little bit like i, I don't want to fail like mm-hmm. i mean who wants to fail right, right right um and but i've also been kind of adopting this mindset of that you know maybe actually failing is the way to move forward right like Mm -hmm. um it's probably cliche to say i want to i gotta fail forward Mm -hmm. right um you know because through those adversity through those challenges through those struggles um you know we learn things about ourselves we learn that oh oh, wow, I, I actually can get through this, right? right? right. Um, when I didn't think I could. Mm-hmm. And I think for me, from a, from a relationship standpoint, um, you know, I think I'm also at the point in my life where uh, I always thought I was ready for a relationship, mm-hmm. but maybe I, maybe I wasn't, mm-hmm. right? Like mm-hmm. my job always came first, yep. and, and it was like, oh, uh, if somebody can fit into this box um, in this little corner – then, you know, we can have a relationship, right? Right, but right. I, I'm kind of trying to expand that to open up more room mm. for a relationship, even though that's really hard and it's, uh, you know, I, I wish it, it was different, right? But, right. I, but I also, at the same time, I, I just kind of feel like there's this trust that I have to have that, you know, God's going to bring this Absolutely. person to me, you mm-hmm. know, because 
that's, you know, uh, to be transparent and totally honest, I mean, that's really what I want. I think we're mm -hmm. designed to be with other people and, and with a with a significant other. So It's, it's, it's biblical, um, man. It, it is. It <laughs> it's is. definitely biblical. So It is. So, you know, but, but until then, you know, uh, I don't think that I could have done all these things and been afforded a lot of these opportunities um, if I was in a relationship too, right? right? So right. sometimes I think the things that we pray for, you know, we're also saying no to many other things that we maybe don't know we're saying mm -hmm. no to, mm -hmm. right? Because I don't think that you can, and that, that's not to say, I, you know, that relationships are bad and, and people can't uh, achieve great things with a person, but I think where I'm at and for the things that I've done, it, it would have been really difficult to have uh, a person in my life. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, now it's, you know, it's, you know, ultimately really what I want. And, yeah, um, yeah. you know, it, and I think it'll happen. It will, yeah. In, in God's time, not That's your right. time, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. I, I appreciate you uh, just being transparent on that, Adam. I know sometimes questions like that, it's kind of personal stuff and people don't want to open up, but I, I appreciate you opening up and, and, and sharing that. So the last question, Adam, that I have for you is what lights you up? Oh, man. Um, what lights me up? Uh you know, I, I really like, uh, I really I really like it when I get a I get to see somebody achieve something and they have this joy on their face, right? right? Yep. yep. Um, I I like it when, uh, I mean, everybody wants to feel wanted, right? And and I I think there's there's two types of people. Like you, you can either walk into a room and some and you say here I am or you walk into a room and somebody says hey there he is mm -hmm. right um, I want to be that guy where I've impacted that person's life or I've treated a person a certain way that they're always happy to see me absolutely right so just like I try to impart when somebody walks in to the gym and I'm like, Hey Mary, like that tells them that I'm happy to see them. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I love the same thing back. Right. I, I love it when mm -hmm. I see, see my friends or see people and they're just like, you know, there's this, um, just this bond and this energy between you that, that, uh, that you've, that you've actually cultivated and have kind of fostered um, by taking care of that relationship. Right. Mm. And, uh, and, and those are, that's, that's the thing I think that, that gets me fired up is like, you know, whether it's, I gave somebody a photograph or I caught something and I gave it to them or, uh, I helped them, you know, with our, you know, helping them get out of pain mm -hmm. or, you know, I, I helped them achieve a, uh, a goal. I mean, I had a, I mean, one of the things that i you know, just a quick story. Like I just had a, a client who, um, I got and it's a, it was a basketball player and, and they had went to another, uh, facility to train and, and, uh, they came back in and I didn't know that they went to this other facility and, and they came cause I, I also trained, um, some other, uh, sibling of theirs. Okay. And, um, and after our, our set, my session with him, the mom, I go out to the mom's car and she says, oh my gosh, he's, it's, he's, he's so happy. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't really think anything of it. And when I, uh, when they left, I got a text later that night that says, Hey, I just wanted to, wanted to tell you, like, we actually went to this other place and, you know, um, he did not have a good experience and we were, he was really down and really discouraged and, you know, after the session with you, like, you know, he really, uh, he really enjoyed it. And Beautiful. I could just, I could just see the confidence Absolutely. in him. Right. Yes. So that actually gets me fired up. Mm -hmm. Like that's mm -hmm. why I do what I do. Cool. Right. It's like, cool. um, you know, I'm not trying to, I mean, I want to be the best I can. I, I don't want to try to necessarily say I'm going to be better than this person and then not be, I, I just want to be me. 
I want to give you all that I can, and then you're either going to like it or you're not. Right, right. I, I, I can't control that, right? But, For sure. But I can't control what I what I put out and, For sure. and the, the energy that I put into that mm -hmm. uh, that hour or, or that, that moment of time that I'm with you. Awesome. All right. So, um, Adam, that... Uh, kind of wraps everything up for, for the podcast and our conversation. I just personally want to thank you for taking time out of your schedule today. I know there's always a lot going on in all of our lives. So so thank you for taking the time out of your schedule um, to hang out with me, to share your story, um, to be vulnerable, to be transparent, to be open. It's, it's greatly appreciated. Before um, I kind of go into my outro here, um, if people want to follow along kind of your, your personal journey, if people want to reach out to you in regards to training and uh, the other things that you're involved in, where can people go? to to find out more about you or connect with you uh well they can connect with me on uh at uh my website for my training business is uh adam bratine sp.com and uh, my last name is b r a t t e n it's pronounced Bratteen, but it looks like bratton yeah and uh <laughs> you can follow me on uh social media at adam bratine photo or uh up and adam Perfect. Uh, I, have a, I have a couple there, and uh, and yeah, and then if you want to check out or talk to us about anything with our uh, CBD company, you can just go to www.zropplus.com. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so listeners, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to the 127 Fit Podcast. Your time, your listening ears um, are always greatly appreciated. If you want to Find out more about myself, follow along um, my guests in regards to um, kind of like what's going on with, with them, things of that nature. You can follow along at 127 Fitness. That is Instagram. My personal Instagram is at QVars. Facebook is at Quentin Vars. And if you guys would do me a huge favor, please leave a five-star rating and review and then also subscribe to the podcast that allows more uh, ears to, to listen to the podcast and, and the guests that I'm bringing on and more people are going to be positively impacted. If you think you would be a great guest or if you have a friend or an acquaintance you think would be a great guest or guests for the podcast, you can um, just send me an email or give this email out to your friend or your acquaintance. The email is 127fit at gmail.com. And then as you guys are listening to the podcast and finding great value, which I know you are uh, on, the, on the guests in regards to the guests that I'm bringing on to the podcast, if you would just share that individual episode or episodes that you're finding that value in um, on your Facebook and Instagram stories, that would be greatly appreciated. And then also as you share the episode or episodes on your Facebook and Instagram stories, if you would use the hashtag be someone to follow, that would be super cool. And then per the usual, I will leave you with Proverbs 2410, which states if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. This time until next time, I will catch you guys later.